Hello, JD professionals. Welcome back. Today we're discussing LDAP, Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. A common use of LDAP is to provide a central place to store usernames and passwords. This allows many different applications and services to connect to the LDAP server to validate users. If we were just using JD Edwards and LDAP together, it wouldn't make much sense. But if we have a multitude of programs running on the network, LDAP is very useful because administrators only have to update one user ID and password for all the applications, and the users only have to remember their user ID and one password for all the applications. So if the user signs into the web client, the security server on the enterprise server, has to decide using the jde.ini file or the security kernel whether LDAP is enabled or not. If LDAP is enabled, then the LDAP server does the authentication and decides whether the user is allowed into JD Edwards or not. If LDAP authentication equals false, then the JD Edwards F98OWSEC is the file used to do the authentication and decides whether you're allowed into JD Edwards or not. LDAP can also handle role security, but I think most companies today are using the JD Edwards system itself to handle that. In today's video, we're going to show you how to configure LDAP and also how to add a new user in the LDAP server. So sit back and relax, but not too much, and let us show you how to use Active Directory. So here we go to Server Manager, and here you can see we're using Microsoft Active Directory as the LDAP server. So we go to the LDAP server and then go to tools and go to Active Directory Administration Center. You'll see that we have the JDE domain set up. You could set up on other domains if you want and then you can see all the users, a lot of users set up already. All these users have to be part of the domain users group. Here you see the system user. That'll be have to, have to be part of the domain users as well. And the password for the JD user have to be the same, exactly the same as the database. You can do a new and create a user. Uh, if you want to create roles, you can use the group. So there's a lot of third-party uh, browser applications that you can download and use to see Active Directory. We're going to use the Apache Directory Studio. Here you see we already have a connection set up, JD Edwards LDAP. And we click on the domain again and then we can find the users. And all the users are listed here. We scroll down and find the system name again. There it is, we click on there. We just have to ensure that this name is the same name we're using in JD Edwards to access the database. So let's minimize this browser and let's go to the uh, DEP and sign into JD Edwards to see what configuration has to be done to make LDAP work. So we enter the password for JDE, sign in, and we go to P95928, and here we see the configuration for the LDAP server. The LDAP admin ID is exactly the same as what we saw in the distinguished name field, so it's exactly the same configuration as here. And then you see the enterprise server location, the server port 6017, the LDAP server location, the LDAP server port number, the LDAP admin password. And this will take you to the LDAP configurations. Make sure this LDAP server name, the status is AB or active with a change. And if you go into mappings, there's two required fields, the enterprise one user ID attribute, SAM account name, and at the bottom there's the user ID search attribute or the SAM account name. Both required fields make sure they're there. And for every account name or username that we add you'll see that there's a, uh, an SAM account name for it. We've actually added a user ID test and you'll see it has an account name. So now we're going to show you how to search for that same user test using LDAP. So we go to values and you'll see there's three fields, a search base, search filter, search scope, and the search filter object class is going to use user. So back to LDAP, you'll see there's four fields at the top, organizational person, person, top, and user. We're going to use the fourth one, user. If you go to P0092, you can see we can't add a user because LDAP's been implemented successfully. 
that if we search for an Ascari LDAP star, you can see that we've created this user before LDAP was implemented, but we can't uh, modify it in any way. And it'll be used as a default template to add users to JDE. So now we go to P95921, work with role relationships. We will see that the uh, default user is assigned to the role LDAP role. If LDAP was administering the roles, we wouldn't be able to see this here. But in our case, we're using JD Edwards to administer the roles. Let's go to P98OWSEC and see what system user is assigned to the default user. And we see the system user, JDE. And if we go to form and then add system user and do a find, we'll see that JDE is there as a default. And if you look in SQL Server, JDE is there as the system user. So now let's go to the JDE.ini file of the enterprise server, and we'll just take a look to see what's required. Uh, so we do a search on JDE INI. There's our file. And then we're going to do a search for LDAP. And we see that LDAP authentication equals true. So that's set properly. So now let's go to services and start the enterprise server. And let it come up and then we'll look at the log file. And let's just look for errors. And there's warnings, but uh, no errors. As long as there's no errors, that means that uh, LDAP has been started correctly. There's one more verification we can do. If we go to configure LDAP defaults, LDAP authentication is enabled. Roles are managed by Enterprise One. Default user profile exists. Default role relationships exist. Default data source system user exists. Everything's okay. So now let's create a user in LDAP. So we go new user in the required information. Here we have control over the passwords. You can have password never expires. User cannot change password. Then we enter the password for the user. Confirm. Click OK. And there we have it. And now if we look for the user, just to make sure he's there, and scroll down, and there is the user created from LDAP and he's a member of domain users so let's sign into the web client using this id remember this user id is not in jde it's from the ldap server and now it will get created automatically by this security kernel that's what ldap is all about you create one user id and it filters out to all the applications using it so now that you've signed into jde for the first time and ldap has created your user id you won't be able to change your password. If you try, you'll get this message, LDAP authentication is enabled. So you'll have to contact your CNC, and even your CNC won't be able to change it. You'll, then he will have to contact the LDAP uh, administrator to, to change the password. There are some things you can change, though. You can change the language still. You can change the date format, date separator character, things of that nature. So I hope that now you have a better idea of LDAP. In the meantime, if you need help in setting up LDAP, or you're going to do an upgrade or a new implementation, or you have a nasty production issue, remember, we are your go-to team. Give us a call or drop us a line. We'll be happy to help. That's all for now. Bye-bye.